Finding the area between two curves using integration. This is simply a matter of subtracting one curve's area, that is the area below a curve and above the x-axis, from a, the, a second curve's area. Uh, and uh, perhaps ensuring you've got it the right way around so such that you end up with a positive result. There's not too much more to it than that. So in order to find the area between two curves, we subtract the area below. Now I'm going to say below with the understanding that it could be above if the curve is below the x-axis. Uh, in order to find the area below between two curves, we subtract the area below one curve from the area below the second. So let's look at a few of those situations. Nope, not what I wanted. Ta da! All right. So let's have some colors. If I have this one with its associated area and I have, say, this one with its associated area. So A2, I use green there, A1. Then, say, the purple one. And that purple area then is area. It's going to be the larger green one, A1 minus that of A2. No real surprises there. Now, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you put the x-axis, right? So order is preserved regardless of where you put the origin. And so if I have the same or similar curves, I'll start with the green one. If I have something like, oh, that's terrible. That's really bad. It's getting more acceptable. I haven't made the transition to tablet yet. I never made the transition from chalk either. And so that's my red area. And my green area was this one. And I'm after the area between the two, which is the purple one. Then even if we're to look at this in terms of what the value of the integrals would be, the integral is going to be negative, right? Because they're below the x-axis. But it won't matter. So my purple area, it's going to be
I want the one on top minus the one on the bottom. The one on top is the red. So the one on top is the red. So it'll be minus, and I haven't defined it. So the red one, it's called A2. So that's okay, we'll leave it as A2. The green one, we'll call it A1. It's the one on top minus the one below. So in terms of the functions themselves, so it's the red one, the one on top. So that would that end up being minus A2. And then I'm going to have, I'll just switch back to blue for a second, minus the green area, which would be minus A1. The minus minus come, of course, comes out to be plus. And let's stop faffing about with the colors. That would be minus A2 plus a1 and you can see a1 is much larger and so you're going to end up with uh, a positive area this thing will end up being greater than zero so order is preserved regardless of where you put the origin and when you studied directed numbers in year seven you understood that then right so what are some things to look out for This works, let me grab a different type. This works, we have this one. This works until uh, these curves cross over. So firstly, there's the obvious case where it's just one curve above another, and I'll do that last as a general sort of case but as soon as these two things begin to cross over so if i have one function let's try and think of something like this and another function like that and you're asked to find it from a it's terrible to b you're asked to find this particular area between these two wild functions, then it's not going to work. Uh, you're going to have to divide this into two parts. So you're going to have to take this as, so you've got this point P, so let's call this X of P. You at least need to find the X value of that, um, of that point. Uh, and you're going to have to do the integral uh, let's label these. So let me make this one f of x and this one g of x. You're going to have to go the f of x is on top of the front. So you'd have to do the area, the area to do the integral from a to x of p of f of x dx minus the area from a to x of p g of x dx up to p and then add to that the rest of it so i'm going to need the area g of x is on top now so from x to p up to b the one on top which is g of x dx and then subtract from that the one that's on the bottom in this case it's f of x so it's from x of p up to b of oops f of x dx right so you've got to you've got to break it up into into two parts now these sorts of questions haven't appeared in the past in formal examinations they don't appear in the text either so it's probably not likely that you'll get this style of question. But in any case, the general rule that I'm about to write assumes that they don't cross over completely like this. Uh, but if, it, if that were to happen, then you'd have to break the problem up as shown there. All right, so let me do the general case then. So generally, 
if I have something like this, so generally. Whatever. Uh, let's say f of x is this one. g of x is this one. And I have an interest in this area here. A, B. Then the area is equal to the integral from A to B. Now I need the one that's on top in order to make this thing um, a positive value. Now if it came out to be negative, there's nothing wrong with simply uh, putting absolute value signs around it as long as you know what you're doing. In many cases in mathematics formulas have absolute values and in some places they don't. Here I guess strictly not needed, a lot of cases not needed. In any case we could easily put absolute value signs around the entire thing but just ensuring if it's the top one minus the bottom one. So f of x dx minus a to b, that's a b, of g of x dx. Now, integrals of this nature, as you may have seen before, have this good property. So this is a sum or the difference. The sum or difference of uh, two integrals, let me try and get this right, the sum Let's just say the difference of the integrals of two functions is equal to the difference of the two functions integrated, or the integral of the difference of the two functions. So what I'm trying to say is that a to b of f of x minus g of x dx those things are equal. Uh, it, it most of the time is going to prove simpler to uh, to do this, and there we have our general result, which deserves a highlight. Dum de da. Right, so let's uh, let's look at some examples. Now, I uh, stole two examples from past HSE questions. Copy. Oop, 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 oop. Magic. All right. Uh, this one is from 2010. So example one, 20, oops, 2010. The final exam from 2010 is question 4b. Uh, the curves, we've got e to the 2x and e to the minus x intersect at not 1. No joke, <laughs> as shown in the diagram. And we need to go up to x equals 2. So knowing what we know now, this doesn't, isn't difficult. So it's the integral from naught. I will write the full thing out first. Not that you would do this in the exam, but so it's the, the top function, e to the 2x dx minus the integral from naught to 2 of the lower function dx. 
And in an exam, of course, you just jump straight to this result of e to the 2x minus e to the minus x dx. And of course, nothing could be simpler than integrating exponentials when the natural logarithm is involved. So I have to divide by 2. So I end up with e to 2x on 2. And then I have to divide by minus 1, which is going to change that sign. And I'm still left with e to the minus x. And I need that from 0 to 2. Getting very messy. Let me just be a tad fussy. All right. Uh, this is not going to evaluate to anything. Simple, clean, easy. And uh, you don't have to try and get cute by adding all these fractions together. But let's see what we end up with. So if I stick that in there, that becomes e to the 4. e to the 4 on 2. This becomes e to the minus 2. I tend to want to get rid of that. Um, negative index. And if I put 0 in there, that's 1 on 2. And then I put that in there, that's just 1, because anything 1, pen wasn't working, 1. And there's not too much to do here. I want to write that. And then that's just 3.5. Uh, three on two, one and a half, and uh, you're done. And you could write uh, square units or something, whatever, at the end. All right, easy peasy. That's probably worth maybe two marks, three. I didn't write the value down. Uh, example two. Example two I have taken from more recent final examination, we've got 2018. 2018 HSC, question 15C part one. And you'll be looking at this thinking, this is a pretty easy question 15, but it's only part one of this, then went on to ask other questions about the same curve. I wonder if I'm going to need a page. No, let's see. Maybe not. Let's see if we can squash it in. So grab the question. There it is there. And paste it here. I wonder if there's a way I can make this any... If I had it written smaller on the right hand side there. Anyway, I think this is acceptable. I'm not sure what will happen if I take that off the edge of the page, however. How's that? All right, so if we've got a shaded region between uh, this cubic and a straight line. And we're told that it meets the curve at 0, 0 and 3, 6. Do not prove this. So in other, in textbook questions, you'd often have to find that that intersection is 3, 6. Not that that's difficult to find. So the area of this particular one I won't write it out in full. I'm desperately running out of space. So the area then is from naught up to 3. 
of the one on top, which is 2x, minus the one that below, which is x cubed minus 7x dx. Not to not to 3 of 2x minus x cubed. Actually, you know what? I'm going to skip this line. I'm frightened that I'm going to run out of space. So let me just do all the integration in one hit and change signs as I go. This becomes x, excuse me, x squared on 2, and the 2 is cancelled, so I'm just left with the No, I can gather like terms. I Okay, don't get too cute. All right, <laughs> I've got the 0 to 3. Let me gather the like terms first. So I've got a 2x there. That becomes plus 7x, so it's 9x. And, all right, got forced into the extra line. Now, let me try again. Uh, that's 9 on 2. x squared, and this is minus... Uh, it's a quarter of x to the 4, from 0 to 3. Which equals, I've got 9 nines, because that's 3 squared is 9, 9 nines are 81, on 2, minus uh, 3, that's 9 squared, because that's 3 to the 4, so 9 times 9, I've got another 81 on 4, which I'd have anticipated that, I could have changed that first over 2, anyway, whatever. Uh, and everything else is just 0, because they're all terms in terms of x, and so that would be double that one, so I'm left with half of it. That's not hard. 81 on 4. And it's an area, so we just acknowledge that by saying it's square units. 81 on 4, unit squared. All right, so uh, the concepts aren't difficult. Execution with simple uh, functions like these is not difficult either. All right, well, that does it for this lesson. I'm Keith Johnston. Thanks for watching.